Hi guys, in this lesson we're going to look at some of the basic operators that JavaScript supports. There are many different operators for use in many different situations. We aren't going to cover all of them today, there are simply too many. So we'll focus on some of the most basic ones for now, and let the more complex ones emerge later in the course. For now let's make a start with the simple arithmetic operators. We can use the plus sign for adding two values together, the minus sign for removing one value from another, the star character for multiplying two values, and the forward slash to divide one number by another, just as we would in regular mathematics. So let's open up our basics.js script file, and we can look at some of these operators in action. In this case, the addition variable contains the value two, which is a result of the expression one plus one. In this case, the subtraction variable contains the value zero. The variable multiplication contains the value 10. And the division variable contains the value 2. Great, so simple math is simple. We can also use the modulus operator to determine the remainder following a division, as well as use increment or decrement operators to increase or decrease a value by one. Let's look at the modulus first. It's very simple to use. In this case, the remainder variable contains the value one, which is what is left over after dividing the number five by the number two. The modulo operator is extremely useful for determining whether numbers are odd or even. All even numbers, when used with a modulo of two, leave zero, whereas all odd numbers, when used with a modulo of two, return one. So it's very easy to determine whether a number is odd or even using the modulo. The increment and decrement operators are slightly more complicated in that they can be used in both postfix mode, where the operator follows the operand, or prefix mode, where the operator appears before the operand. The difference in the behavior between these two is quite subtle, but it can be a source of bugs. So let's take a quick look at a basic example. First of all, let's create two new variables. So we have two variables, one called postfix, one called prefix, and they're both initialized to the same value, five. Let's open up our examples page in a browser quickly, and we can look at the difference between using prefix and postfix. So let's open up the console. So when we use postfix, increment or decrement, the expression returns the value and then increments it. So in this case, the expression returns a different number than the actual value of the variable that has been incremented. So remember the postfix variable was declared with a value of five. So in the first expression, we used postfix plus plus, and this expression returned five. But if we then check the value of the postfix variable, it actually equals six. The prefix increment or decrement operators don't suffer from this subtle issue. So when using prefix increment or decrement, the value is incremented or decremented and then returned. This is why the expression plus plus prefix is the same as when we log the value of the prefix variable. So this behavior creates a confusion that can lead to off by one errors in some situations. And for this reason, it is advised to avoid using the increment or decrement operators wherever possible. We can use assignment operators instead. Let's move on to look at these next. Simple assignment we've already seen, where we use a single equal sign to assign a value to a variable. Next up is the addition assignment, where we can use a shorthand format to add to an existing value.
This is identical to using the increment operator, except that it doesn't create any confusion. So the expression addition assignment plus equals one is the same as if we did addition assignment equals addition assignment plus one. It's just a shorthand version of the same thing. We don't have to increment by one here, by the way. We could just as easily do plus equals 10 to increment the value by 10. Subtraction assignment works in the same way. We can also do multiplication assignment, division assignment, and modulus assignment in the same way. So these shorthand operators are all very simple to use and work in exactly the way that you would expect. The last set of operators that we're going to look at today are pretty important and you'll use them a lot. These are the comparison operators and are used in conditionals such as if statements. JavaScript gives us equality comparison as well as greater or less than comparisons. And the language does have a gotcha here in the form of type coercion. Let's take a quick look. For this example, let's open up our examples page in a browser and we can use the browser's console to look at how comparison operators work. So there are two types of comparison operators. We can use either regular comparison or strict comparison. So when we're using comparison operators, instead of saying one equals true, we would say one is equal to true. So in this case, the difference between non-strict, which uses two equal signs, and strict, which uses three equal signs, is considerable. The first time we received the value true, whereas the second time we received the value false, even though the operands in both of these expressions are identical. So what's going on? JavaScript is a loosely typed language and will sometimes perform type coercion when comparing operands of different types. And that's exactly what happens here. In the first example, JavaScript coerces the Boolean value true to the number one. In the second form, we use the strict equality operator and no type coercion takes place. This time, not only does the value have to be the same, but the type does as well. And numbers are not the same type as Booleans. So the result is therefore false. It is recommended to always use strict equality comparison to prevent subtle bugs introduced by JavaScript's type coercion. So we can also test for unequality by using a bang as the first symbol. So as you've probably already guessed, type coercion is taking place here as well. Different types are converted in different ways depending on the types of the operands being compared. And for this reason, it is always advisable to use the strict form of equality operators. We can also check if one value is greater than another value. We do that using the right pointing angle bracket. In this case, one is not greater than one, so the expression returns false. We could also use greater than or equal instead. In this case, the expression returns true. One is greater than or equal to one. And we can also use less than or less than or equal.
Generally, we'll use these operators on numbers. If one of the operands is a string that can be parsed into a number, it will be converted to a number behind the scenes by JavaScript. In this case, the string value 1 is parsed into an integer by JavaScript automatically. So it's the same as if both operands are numbers. If JavaScript is unable to parse the string into an integer, it will return not a number instead. So what's happened here is that the string hello cannot be parsed into a number, and so JavaScript returns the value nan, which is a special number. One is not greater than nan, and so we receive the value false. In this lesson, we looked at some of the more basic JavaScript operators, including the arithmetic operators that we'll generally use for simple mathematics, the assignment operators for assigning values in different ways, and comparison operators for comparing different values. We also learned that sometimes operators don't behave intuitively, such as the subtle differences between using the increment and decrement operators in prefix mode as opposed to postfix mode, as well as the type coercion sometimes carried out with comparison operators. Thanks for watching.